Okay, let's start with the outline of the talk. First, I will introduce how we can understand causality and how it was uh, seen uh, in the past and how we see causality in the 21st century. Then I will talk about your well-known uh, case of bivariate Granger causality for Gaussian processes and in, about its mis extension for multivariate uh, cases. Then, as promised in the title, uh, we will talk about non-Gaussian processes, more concretely about, uh, about exponential uh, processes, and for them we defined multivariate Granger causality. In addition to it, we focus on uh, other, uh, another group of non-Gaussian uh, non processes, so-called temporal point processes, and for them we define multivariate Granger causality. And this were about modeling. But in the last part of the talk, we will focus on how to do inference in all these models. And the inference will be quite non-traditional. Uh, uh, it will be by statistical compression schemes inspired by coding theory. OK, so let's start with completely general topic, uh, general uh, definition of causality. In philosophy, already before Christ, uh, famous philosophers dealt with these questions. And in those, in those times, they were, data was in fact even an unknown term. So they focused on uh, causality uh, more on uh, the, as, uh, as a, word, a word of explanation on answer why something happens. In, um, Aristoteles, um, define causality in terms of four parts, like at each, uh, let's say, for each effect, we could, each effect we could describe by means of four abstract uh, causes, material cause, formal cause, efficient cause, and final cause. So you see here the figure, in the middle of the figure, we have a fi uh, already finished table, but and, and table is an effect. And uh, we are uh, we want to know what are the causes of this effect. So concretely, one must have uh, wood to prepare the table, but without wo uh, wood itself doesn't suffice. We need to have a formal design, formal cause. Uh, then we have uh, someone who does it, some carpenter, if this is called efficient cause. And uh, the goal why it's all happening is eating, dining. So this is, um, in fact, quite nice. You see, this describes, let's say, uh, reasons, explanation of why the question. But for us, working with data, data and, and models, this is very difficult where we could grasp graft this, uh, this topic, uh, this definition. So we need a different definition. Uh, and now we get to definition of cause uh, by quantitative uh, approaches. And uh, how could we approach it? So let's say we have two uh, variables, two, uh, two processes, and we want to, between them, decide which is a cause of the, another one. So if you see the hen and uh, chicken and egg, then the typical question is, was the first hen or egg or vice versa? So supposing we have sufficiently described set of hens and set of eggs, that we could um, look at them as variables and we would model hen by data given uh, uh, describing egg and vice versa, we would model um, um, uh, hen uh, described by data of X. So we would be then interested which description is better, or in other words, whether between these models and description exists some asymmetry. And I'll use the word model. We have no model yet, but this is very crucial in causality that for, uh, for, for inferring causality, we always need a model. 
in the history of causal inference, which has been older than 20, 30 years, or 40, 50 years, <laughs> in case of Granger, uh, many methods have been developed. Uh, the first two methods uh, by Pearl to Solomon, who introduced the Bayesian structural causal networks in 2000, is, uh, is uh, the, the very popular this model. And the second one, Granger causality, is, uh, let's say, nowadays second most popular model. And that's the model about uh, we will talk today. The last three mentioned are also very popular. Um, however, uh, I will, we will use them only as comparison models, benchmark models. And this is, of course, not exhaustive list of all models. There are daily developed new models, which are, in fact, more incremental models of what has been uh, here listed. However, uh, also deep, deep, uh, deep network um, models are developed for causality, but they are basically always some combination of already existing baseline methods. Good. So now let's concentrate on the definition of Granger causality. I know more for most of you it's very uh, it's well known, but I just want to come smoothly uh, from uh, the formal definition to the upgrade of uh, the definitions of Granger causality for non gaussian processes. So uh, we know this con this model introduced by or, uh, model, this concept of causality introduced by Granger has both properties of being econometric and as well as probabilistic. It includes time series. At the same time, it includes the definition of predicting a probability, uh, 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 predicting uh, 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 an instance of time series by um, uh, other time series given uh, some, uh, some information set. So, so you see these two features are present. Uh, sorry. Uh, and uh, we can say that an event X is a cause or to the event Y if Y occurs before uh, X occurs before Y. So you see the feature of temporalities here. The likelihood of X is non-zero. So the variable occurs at all. Makes sense to talk about it. And the third one, the likelihood of occurring Y given X is higher than the likelihood of, of why occurring alone? So these are, let's say, the properties which should Granger causality have. However, we have still no model, right? This is still without me. So let's go now even deeper in a formal formalizing the, uh, the Granger causality definition. So uh, assume we have given a set of all information in the universe up to time t, denoted i t. And similarly, assume we have the set from which we exclude a variable x up to time t. Excuse me. Um, so then we can say that for these two variables, x causes the variable y if the probability of uh, uh, the event that y event in time t plus uh, 1 is a member of some non-zero set conditioned on the whole universe is different than the probability of that the same uh, instance or event in time t plus one belongs to the set, the same set, uh, where from uh, conditioned on the universe where variable x to time t was excluded. I mean, we could even say that on the left side is bigger than and equal than on the right side, yeah, because we see that conditioning on a bigger set uh, for that is probably the, uh, an increasing function. Um, and we say that, so we, we denote it x causes y, x arrow y, and process x currently causes uh, y if future values of y can be better predicted using the, pa the past x and y rather than only past of y. So y helps in prediction. 
Okay, and now, so this was still without, it was formal definition, but still without model. There was no, no uh, concrete uh, claim how should this better mean, yeah? And Granger came with the idea, this better can be uh, assessed by uh, using two regressions, the most similar ones, yeah, our linear regressions, and compare their ability to predict. So the standard Granger uh, uh, cost test is based on these two uh, linear regressions, where the first one is richer, where we have we consider also the path of y. And what is important uh, here is that it's assumed that uh, they both, uh, the variables considered x and y, are at least weak stationary. If they are normal, then it's even better. And uh, the error is normal. <laughs> and we say x causes y if the rich regression, number one, is statistically significantly better than the regression two. Yeah, y, x contributed into the prediction of y. Good, I mean, until now, there is nothing new. Uh, but for uh, recapitulation, recalling, uh, I, I wanted to, to, to share it with you. Okay, so you noticed from the previous uh, slide that we talk only two about variables X and Y, so only the variant case. However, in many applications, we don't have, and in fact, in most applications, we don't have only two variables. So the question is, how can this simple regression cope with this? Yeah, and one of the possible applications is in EEG. Yeah, we have regions of brains, uh, of brain regions, and uh, we have lines in, you know, 32, 64 electrodes. So doing uh, these pairs of regression is quite inefficient. So this is one motivation. So here we would probably need some other model. Another option is in climatology. Yeah, we have uh, some climatology. Uh, uh, phenomena, for example, wind, and we are interested how wind speed interacts with wind speed in various locations. So you see it's multivariate, we have multivariate uh, scenario. Another option is uh, in genetics. So microbiologists generate a lot of uh, so-called gene expression data, which um, are for some selected subset of genes a time series of how a uh, gene, concrete gene, reacts on some chemist, chemical um, uh, injected into, into, uh, into the cell. Yeah? So, uh, and these values are real values. So, and uh, the microbiologists are interested how these gene expressions influence, uh, uh, or, or let's say, how the genes interact in time. So how, in fact, Cause uh, which gene causes which one in time in this gene expression. So you can see from all these examples that a good definition of multivariate uh, multivariate causality is is necessary. And now we have the definition. The definition is not is no big surprise. It is from two uh, uh, vector regressive models, we have a set of vector, uh, 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 autoregressive models. So, so now we upgrade from two um, uh, variables to P variables. So assume we have all time series or uh, processes given by time series of the same length, as we can assume. And we are interested which of uh, which time series out of this P cause one concrete time series Xi. So for that, analogically, as the previous two equations in the bivariate case, we have for each of the target value xi in time t, we ask, can we express uh, this value as uh, a linear combination of previous uh, values with history, let's say, with some given history by, by given by leg? Uh, of, of all these uh, included variables, yeah, p variables, plus again some error term. So you see uh, here is x, j, t legged is in fact a matrix where the columns are um, are the uh, concrete 
variable xj, but it's always shifted of uh, 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 this one position. And we are interested here how uh, to know how significant values are these beta values, because he's uh, how contribute this beta value in predicting xit. And it's again analogically in the, as in two, two, two variate case, uh, bivariate case, assume that error is Gaussian, which means zero, and bounded variance. Again, if we, um, uh, then it also follows from that xi is also Gaussian. And we say that a variable xj, Grange, it causes variable xi with some predefined like g, that's a history to which we go for a prediction. Um, if and only if at least one of the d coefficients in j's row of beta i is non-zero. So in fact, this, if you look at this beta, beta is a matrix. It's not just for one value, but it's d values for each variable. So that's why out of these d variables, d values, we can ask which of them is non-zero. So it suffices that only one is non-zero, and we can say that this variable has causal effect, uh, that, that this, uh, this coordinate corresponding in that, uh, course, uh, the, the coordinate corresponding to the index of variable j is causal to xi. So I can mm -hmm. ask questions while you talk? Yeah, you can ask. It depends. Okay. <laughs> others can hear you, but I can also repeat the question. I just want to confirm that I understand it correctly. Uh, so basically, it's about. So if there is one autoregressive lag in the time series that is non-zero, then then it, then we can say it range of causes the target time series. One out of this d d that's uh, simplified. We have simply uh, assumed that this autoregressive lag is for the target variable is applied also to others. This is which should which should contribute as a causal variable. So it's sufficient if one of them is non-zero, then we can say this variable out of this variable is causal. Okay. So here you can. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I also have a question there. And uh, so these all J's, X J's, are they a causal relationship between them? So let's say are are they uh correlated or multi-correlated it can be because if you have uh, a lot of variables there in j and they are also causing with each other are multi-correlated uh i mean in general uh, yes uh, that's a good question so it's assumed that the variables are between each other um uh, independent oh. However, uh, the shifted variables are not anymore independent because yeah, they because are, let's say, problem. they are very uh, it's collinear. Yeah. But let's say the variable itself, uh, xi and xj are not correlated, only they are shifting. So they are correlated. Okay, so the variable itself are not correlated, they're lag features. Yeah, after they are lagged, yeah. they are, of course, correlated yeah. because somehow yeah. they are. Sure, really they are. But the original, no, they should not be correlated. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it's not mentioned here. But it's like uh, assumption of range causality is also yeah. independence of variables. Mm -hmm. um, yes, and uh, here by defining that um, sufficient that only one of the d variable uh, coefficients is non-zero uh, coefficients beta i. Uh, we are interested in finding these non-zero values in the matrix which we get, or, or matrix of all betas. Yeah. So in the next three, uh, figure, we have an example where we have the only one for simplicity. Yeah. So we get data. We uh, do the uh, autoregressive uh, models, compute betas. Here is really the only one, and. Corresponding to the adjacency matrix, we have the causal output graph. Simple. Yeah, so it's just graphical. That's why are these models called graphical, graphical range, because you will have some graph derived, uh, uh, assigned to it. Good. So the situation now simplified uh, to testing of zeroness of 
values beta i j. This can be done in a classical way using granger Cassage test for each pair of variables. This we call exhaustive Granger, meaning that exhaustive number of pairs is tested. However, this is not very efficient. We have very high P number of processes and also for very high D. So as an option is to use uh, the variable uh, vector autoregressive uh, model with um, uh, edit lasso or adaptive lasso penalty. So uh, having least square um, error or maximum likelihood error, we equip it with uh, a lasso, uh, adaptive lasso. These two methods were introduced uh, in 2007 and uh, the ADTCM uh, we, we also intro we introduced uh, in 2009, uh, 2019. Well, uh, uh, and then in this uh, talk, I will talk about a completely different approach, uh, utilization of statistical compression schemes instead of penalty. Okay, so then now, until now, we, we learned about Granger causality and about multi, multi, uh, multivariate Granger causality. And as the subtitle of my talk uh, promises, uh, we will also spend time with also with non Gaussian distributions. The motivation is that we are trained to use Gaussian distribution. We are taught it should use it, but in fact, uh, in uh, real life, it very frequently happens that uh, uh, the data which we have fit much better other distributions like exponential distributions, quite a wide uh, class of functions. So it's wide class of functions. It offers also more parameters than not only variance and, and mean, but also some extra uh, parameters. So, um, and they all have uh, the same generic uh, probability function. So from application side, uh, one can be surprised, but a log normal distribution, which is exponential, is in fact more frequent uh, in daily life. For example, if we focus on uh, the lengths of spoken words in phone conversation, conversation or lengths of sentences, these, uh, these are all log normal. They fit better log normal than normal. Or the age of marriage or, or income. Yeah, we all know the tables where everywhere is uh, assumed uh, that the uh, income is normal, but in fact, it, can be fitted much better by no log norm. Mm -hmm. Another uh, nice exponential distribution is gamma distribution or inverse Gaussian. So these are very appropriate for modeling wind speed, especially high wind speed. Uh, that's the figure on the left, right side. You see this is uh, over like 20 years, uh, one year period uh, wind speed in uh, 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 yeah, from climatological data. And uh, looking at uh, applications from chemistry, um, Brownian motion of particles of fractional Brownian motion is not normal. It, it is uh, better modeled by generalized normal distribution, as well as EEG time measurements are not normal. They are maybe normal if we take a very small uh, time interval, but if we want to take long EEG, fact, it's common to take 20 minutes of observation, uh, this is very bad fitting of normal distribution mm -hmm. by EEG. Yes, so another application in economics, prices, incomes are, or uh, populations are exponential, but they are often skewed skewed to the right. So other than normal um, distributions are more appro appropriate, for example, Pareto, log normal, or generalized normal distribution. Yeah, uh, in neurology, we don't have only uh, EEG, but we have nowadays also 
uh, measurement of neural spike data in a very microscopic level, and for neural neurons uh, don't behave normal. They behave with, uh, let's say, uh, with shocks. Yeah, so we can uh, say this. Uh, uh, Spike data are either firing or not firing. So for that to use normal distribution or Gaussian distribution is pure na naivety. However, for them we can represent, we can represent them by temporal point processes about which we also will talk today. So here's an example of this uh, new spike data. So it's either firing or not firing, and one is always interested in some time interval, whether in that interval they were firings and how many. Yes, so today I will talk about two types of two extensions of practical Granger model and about uh, their causal inference for processes which are from exponential family. Oh, now, now, now we see it's quite wide class of, of uh, um, processes and for temporal point process, so which where belong, for example, this uh, uh, neural spike spike data, spiking data. So let's start now with the first class, uh, uh, class of um, exponential distribution. So now we have again multivariate case, we have the variables xi, and we assume that this xi is modeled by some, um, it can be uh, fitted by some uh, exponential distribution. So <clears throat> this distribution, this is its generic form, has some parameter theta, yeah? so theta, and has a link function, which is itself a exponential function, yeah, exponential distribution, this link function. Each i is one variable, that's why it's everything indexed. indexed. And we introduce the so-called uh, heterogeneous graphical Granger model, abbreviation HGGM, which uses the idea of generalized linear models, so that instead of having linear um, vector autoregressive models, we have Again, linear combination, but we have some link function which is wrapping the linear combination on the right side. So the target variable is the target variable is uh, in fact uh, approximated by uh, the mean value of the target uh, variable is approximated by the link function applied on the linear combination of the past. Uh, of all, all past variables. And again, we have here some time window. Uh, it's analogical, like in the uh, Gaussian case, we go to the depths of, or the, to the history, to the past of D values. L, uh, L from one to D, are always the, um, uh, is, is, uh, are, are the parts of the data, which we, uh, the, the time series, which we consider. <clears throat> one uh, one needs to know still the mean value of xi and the variance which one can compute from this version and um, uh, variance depends only on mean value uh, mean i value which is the mean value of xi and uh, why it's called heterogeneous uh, the nice thing is that we can for every xi have different link functions so meaning that we can have causal graph uh, between variables which where one is one variable has Poisson distribution another one has gamma distribution and so on yes so that's why the the adjective heterogeneous mm -hmm. and the inference is uh, in the first view one can proceed the same way like in the Graphical Granger causality, uh, graphic Granger model with Gaussian <clears throat> this uh, time series that one can use again some uh, lasso or adaptive lasso penalty. Here is not the least square. The first two terms are is are not the least square uh, value, but uh, maximum likelihood. 
and uh, estimate. And uh, so we have maximum likelihood estimate for Slada de Lasso. And we proved that when we use this adaptive lasso, the, the, the minimum, the algorithm computing uh, the beta values is converging to the optimum. So in other words, uh, the solution is consistent. And then analog analogically, as in um, Gaussian multivariate uh, causality, we say the same. Xj, Granger causes Xi variable, for some certain given uh, like D, if and only if at least one of the D coefficients in J's row of beta estimate I uh, of this uh, minimization problem is non-zero. Good. Um, so here we have um, results of um, our in synthetic experiments. Uh, we did a uh, we, we were interested in precision of uh, causal inference for uh, synthetically generated random graphs. Uh, I don't know, we have at least uh, 50 random graphs which we generated here. And we compared our method, that's a red one, with three other benchmark methods. So one of them is uh, the um, algorithmic algorithmic. Uh, complexity case crack, uh, the second one transfer entropy, and uh, the third one is so-called so statistical framework regression okay, causality. And uh, as you can see, I, um, our method seems to be good, uh, it's like the best. However, um, it is, uh, for example, in the middle fig figure, you can see that with increasing number of features, meaning P, number of processes, in fact, uh, its uh, efficiency and this precision is dropping. Yeah, so that's not the only pitfall. Uh, there are other pitfalls of, of this approach uh, with lasso penalization or adaptive lasso penalization. As it was already here, questions about questions about the multicollinearity. It is exactly the case. So the design matrices in graphical Granger model and also heterogeneous graphical Granger model are also multicollinear because of this shifting of, uh, of minus one time. Another problem is that uh, selecting this regularization parameter is not easy in both cases, linear or, or GLM regression. Uh, and it's even more difficult uh, for multicollinear design matrix. I mean, we could do it with cross validation, but this is again, uh, let's say, not the best approach. Test. And another pitfall is that lasso type penalization in general, they overselect variables, meaning they uh, claim more non causalities than it usually is the ground truth. So, we were not happy simply with this method. Yes, so we were thinking how to proceed further, and it will be still discussed today how our solution. But before I show how we did it with this uh, comp uh, compression schemes, I will still mm, define um, the last or the second uh, second model because we have now Granger causal uh, uh, multivariate Granger causality. Uh, then we have heterogeneous Granger causality, and the third will be the Granger causality for uh, P um, point, process, point processes. So that's this one. So point processes or temporal point processes are uh, very useful models for uh, in neurology, uh, in financing also, because it's somehow in finances, pred prediction of of shocks in fin uh, financial data or in seismology. Mm -hmm. um, so let's describe now, uh, in general, not one dimensional process, but P, -vi -vi -p -vi variate tem process. A P variate temporal point process can be represented as a collection of counting processes. Yes, yeah? so and you know, counting processes, this is, is, is something like um, Poisson. Yes. Yeah? So, well, Poisson is a type of counter process. However, we don't say how it is counted here. 
So UI is a counting process for uh, dimension I. And it's counted to time T, which is uh, UIT is a number of events which happened before time T. Yeah, so again, the same figure as I had a few slides before. So this is a temporal point process or a spike, spike train data. So we could, let's say, between time T3 and T4, compute how many times uh, uh, the point was above some value. Yeah, so the value is given. So, and then we would have OI. Uh, this temporal point process can be, uh, however, still more concretely described by so-called condition intensity function, which is, let's say, for dimension i, lambda i t is the mean value of uh, the increase of these counting processes in infinite small interval, conditioned on the, let's say, a whole universe, or let's say conditioned on other processes, considering the other processes. Yeah, so that's called the history of the process. Uh, this calligraphic HT is the history of the process before time t, however, of all processes, because the process is p variant. So for each, uh, for each dimension i, we look at the mean value of increases of the counting process in, in, uh, in, in infinite uh, small interval, given this history before time t. And now let's define Granger causality. It is, in fact, very analogical to the definition which we had in the beginning when we still didn't talk about uh, vector R regressive models. However, we had this definition there. These probabilities, here we have it with mean values. Do you remember it? We had these probabilities and now it's mean value. I mean, it's also random value. Huh? So the J's dimension of temporal point process ranges causes the E's process dimension if the, their intensities differ, and they differ so that uh, the intensity uh, of, of that difference uh, in, in the mean value of, of, the diff, uh, of the increase of the counting process in interval condition on the whole universe, meaning all processes given, is different than the mean value uh, of the same condition on on the process where process J is excluded. Meaning the J's process really contributes to the mean value. On the left side, the value is bigger. So uh, the history of the J process, uh, process J contributed to, add, to creating the, the mean value or contributed to the intensity. Cool, so now we are equipped, we have now all the three models defined. Yeah, so from the simplest one, uh, Gaussian multivariate Granger model, heterogeneous uh, Granger model, and now we have the point process uh, model and Granger causality. However, uh, we will focus uh, on a special case of these point processes, and why? Because they can. Uh, they can be easily computed. Uh, Hawks came in 1975 or 71 with an idea that he described a special case of temporal point, process, process, uh, point processes with conditional intensity having this form. So the conditional intensity in dimension I is the background intensity, or let's say some exogenous value, plus uh, the sum over all dimensions of the past. So this interval is not, let's say, interval in the Riemannian sense. It's like sum of the past, yeah, of the past of the um, increase of the counting process to time tau multiplied by so-called kernel function. The kernel function is a function uh, uh, 
which shows uh, the influence, expresses the influence of previous of FJ on E's in, uh, uh, intensity. Normally, it's an exponential function. It can be a bell function. It's usually in the, in the, in, at zero, it's the biggest. So, and uh, for this type of, for this type of uh, um, uh, processes, uh, there is an interesting theorem. In a multivariate uh, Hox processes, the events in the J's dimension do not venture cause events in the E's dimension if and only if uh, the influence function in, uh, in these indices is zero. So it means, again, the Inference in Granger model, this is more of these uh, processes, reduces to testing zeroness of values phi i j. On the left side, we have pictures which we didn't uh, describe yet. So uh, the bottom picture is typical one dimensional Hox process. You see, it's, uh, it's like process of some shocks. Yeah. So in the upper part, we see three-dimensional temporal point process. It doesn't even have to be Hox process, and its corresponding counting process. It's in the so, so the pictures or icons of different color and shape are uh, let's say the uh, the dimensions, and uh, in uh, the upper part you see how uh, to some time t uh, each of uh, some, some of them occur, yeah. So the triangle, star, and so on occur, and from that you can compute this ut, and then concrete, then consequently the intensity. So in, mm -hmm. in one dimensional hard uh, process, Hox process. Yeah. So uh, you have. Here, let's say it's one time series, right? Yes. So, where do we check the Granger causality with its its? It is reduced uh, that you, in fact, the Granger causality is tested by the Kernler function. So you just you model the intensity, and uh, then you are interested how when you have the values of intensity and the background exogenous intensities, you can then formulate these equations. Mm -hmm. And these equations then serve, they in fact replace the equations in this, uh, with the previous uh, objector regressives, and for them you, you, you uh, do some variable uh, selection method because you are interested in testing the zeroness of this uh, uh, VAI. So now we have these three types of models and the uh, approach how to test the zeroness and non zeroness is done either by a lasso or additive lasso. However, for uh, capital, a big N, a much bigger uh, length time series as P, uh, these are not very high. Uh, they are high, the precision, causal precision. However, the opposite case not when we have uh, so then the question is if 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 the uh, if the if the precision cause of in f1 is poor or not so great for uh, p uh, close to n then uh, are there some other methods which or instead of this penalization methods which would perform better on sh so called short time series mm -hmm. what are those short time series so long time series, we call those which are like 10,000 times uh, the value P, yeah, the length of, of, of the time series. And short time series are the opposite. So short time series is are those which are like 1,000 times P, yeah? So we, if P is five, then the time series of length 5,000 is still short. Yes, and uh, we had solution how to approach it. Uh, we approached, uh, uh, we introduced these uh, compression schemes for Granger causal models. Uh, and we, cons uh, we constructed objective functions by, by them. And these we, uh, these we uh, 
optimized. <clears throat> So suddenly you see some figure completely from completely different uh, discipline. However, everything is connected with everything. So we use in these complexion schemes so-called Occam's razor. I'm sure you heard it once, Occam's razor. Oh, Occam, Occam was a British or in English uh, monk living in the third century, and he came with a very clever and simple statement. The simplest explanation is probably uh, uh, the uh, the, the right one, the most likely the right one. I mean, we use this uh, principle in everyday thinking, in, in decisions. Um, also, the best hypothesis is to describe the regularities in the data um, is probably the, that one which compresses the data at most. Yeah, so with some somehow common common sense. And so this simple uh, approach was uh, used by statistician uh, Rissanen and Greenwald and their students, and they developed so-called minimum description length principle with you, by using statistical uh, the tools of statistical learning uh, theory. The idea is that the models are here are statistical hypotheses and descriptions uh, of these hypotheses are defined uh, as universal codes, uh, and universal codes are, in fact, yeah, the center, the central concept of information theory. So, how it is constructed now? So, imagine we have now um, we want to write a description code that uh, defines uh, the code uh, 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 that describes uh, describe data and also the model which uh, models the data. So we construct, uh, we construct the description code with length LD, where we first encode the hypothesis H, which can be, for example, uh, exponential distribution of concrete type from a set of considered hypotheses. And then we code data with the help of this exponential distribution, yeah, this uh, this uh, this uh, age. So formally, it's a sum of the description code is a sum of complexity or description of L, uh, L hypothesis and complexity or description of the data described by the hypothesis. But we are not ha still happy with, with just some description. We want a minimal one, yeah, based on that Occam Razor principle. And we say that H achieving this minimum is the best explanation of data D. So beside uh, the example which I gave that, let's say, uh, calligraphic H can be the set of um, uh, exponential distributions, it can be also set of um, polynomials. Yeah? If we decide we want to approximate a function, by set of polynomials, so this is also like a set of hypotheses, and then we do some data fitting on that, yeah, on that model which we selected. Um, what is has this uh, compression or let's say coding theory? Uh, it is uh, based on that very very deep fact that there is uh, one to one correspondence between code length functions, yeah and probability distribution. So for each code length, let's say we can find some probability distribution, which is described by this code and vice versa. For probability distribution, we can find a, a representation in terms of code lengths. It's terms of, of code lengths, yeah. Yes, this is enough. Okay, so now we have one idea, minimum description length. However, there is another very similar idea uh, called minimum message length. So uh, they both are minimum message lengths was even earlier introduced. They both are uh, information theoretical methods. And uh, compared to MDL is this minimum message length Bayesian. It still assumes that we know uh, some the distribution of of the coefficients we we, we want to we, we look for. Uh, MDL doesn't uh, doesn't 
use assumption about the data generating process. Good, so now we know what is what are these compression schemes, MML and MDL. And now let's see uh, how these were applied to our three graphical models. So here the idea is that uh, the hypothesis H are the models defined by probability distributions. And for them, we, uh, based on the model which we select, we construct an objective function. This objective function will be for us the criterion to do the variable selection. And then we design an optimization algorithm. So let's have a look now. So we are now by the simplest model, uh, graphical credential model, yeah, Gaussian case. So look at the figure on the right side. So what are the models? We do, if you remember, these models are regressions. And beta is, beta value is causal when it's non-zero and when it's zero is non-causal. So we could, let's say the set of uh, causal variables represent as a vector of zero and ones. Where is zero, this is variable is non-causal. Where is one, the variable is causal. So the, the figure on the right side is a simple case where we have five uh, variables and uh, we model, uh, this model, causal model is described like gamma E, where E is now five, the red point. So you see uh, the arrows correspond to ones and zero to uh, uh, no, no, uh, no, um, Arrow. You can we, you can see we can also consider self self causality. Yes, so uh, that x i causes x i. Good. So, <clears throat> so typical auto regressive model. Auto, yeah. So, yeah. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> if we don't exclude them. Yeah. Um, so so having now for each of this gamma i, we can construct compute from the data, uh, the initial in estimates beta i and uh, sigma i. Yeah, so from the data we can find uh, the, by maximum likelihood or, or by least squares. Yeah. That was the question. <laughs> and this we do for all, each model gamma i. So if we have then data, we can um, also compute so-called ri hat, which is again computed from data, yeah, gamma, is the gamma function, it's, 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 uh, and key, chi a is uh, the number of ones in gamma i. Yeah, so, so this we also derived. So based on this, we derived uh, the MDL criterion as this uh, function. Yeah, so for technical details, please have a look into our papers. Um, the second uh, uh, second uh, MML, minimum message length uh, uh, distribution is, uh, uh, minimum message length criterion is derived similarly, but we still use um, the fact that that the beta uh, and sigma are assumed to be Gaussian. Yeah, so priors are given. Good. So now I'm sorry I cannot describe. The, um, anyway, believe this is correct. So assuming that we have now uh, these uh, uh, objective functions, what we can do with them? Uh, we need to look for which model is uh, the best description of, of the models. So what we do, we propose to uh, minimize uh, these functions uh, over all possible models. So all possible models, we know there are finite number, there is finite number of these models here, yeah, two up P, yeah, two up to not so many. So four of them, we can compute these criteria from the uh, previous page. And we also decided to compute uh, Kaike and uh, uh, bias information uh, just to see whether we don't do unnecessarily something more complicated when this uh, common uh, criteria had better result. And again, that would not be in the sense of a common razor or admitted. However, so we compare them. So for each uh, fixed I, so we uh, and D, we uh, had all these gamma i's and vectors, and we proposed uh, a genetic algorithm um, which executed operations, crossover and mutation on these on populations of these uh, zero ones vectors. 
and we had of course some parameters when to stop so after uh, uh, after exploiting all these number of generations we have as output hsn symmetrics of causal graph with rows where each row correspond to the uh, the best model which gives the minimum s gamma i yeah s gamma a is one of these four and here is the result of synthetic experiments this is for d3 and you see we have uh, again a short time series so all these uh, information theoretical approaches uh, are the four uh, are the four um, methods and separated from them are the classical penalty methods so you see in all cases uh, the uh, f1 measure of this graph on, on five time series is significantly better than the penalization methods. So it's really superior for short time series. And you see, uh, it was worse uh, to use SC, uh, MDL and MML, because also AIC on BIC are, I mean, BIC you see it's quite good, but AIC not. Okay, so. So it was for graphical uh, for Gaussian um, graphical Granger model. And now let's have a look at uh, Poisson graphical Granger model. So we proposed and uh, we used here uh, MML only, MDL not, but MML. So this is a special case of uh, uh, exponential distributions and special case of HGM. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah, so uh, here by knowing uh, the dispersion coefficients of each time series and of having the maximum likelihood estimates of beta i, again, initial value, uh, we constructed a criterion for selection of uh, the best uh, causal set. Uh, we used the Genga genetic algorithm and uh, we uh, where uh, our results were superior to other nonlinear uh, multivariate causal methods called Lingam, also HGM with Lasso or adaptive Lasso, and the point process Granger causality. Uh, this we extended also to the bigger class, uh, heterogeneous uh, minimal message lengths where there were not only the Poisson distributions, but all, yeah, in general, all uh, exponential. And again, we had, uh, in this case, uh, superior results compared uh, to the baseline methods. Here you can see an application. This is an electrohysterogram data we had of Icelandic mothers on the left side um, in the upper figure. figure. And uh, we had 16 electrodes and the goal was to differentiate between the third semester of pregnancy and already starting labor. And we compared it uh, to the other baseline methods. And you could see that the first HMML is somehow the most discriminative. The graphs can, you can see they are different yeah, for the women having already birth and the women which is not having a birth yet. The other uh, results seem to be more spurious. Uh, so here is the algorithm. Uh, I am not about to discuss it, uh, let's say, in detail, but the input is, are the graphs possible? The graphs, uh, then uh, the number of parameters of the genetic algorithm and uh, uh, the output of uh, this algorithm should be the adjacent symmetrics of the causal graph. Um, what are the, so the highlights of the approach is high precision. However, it has also some, let's say, drawbacks. The method is quite slow. You see it's uh, in P, it's polynomial. Um, uh, and if we don't do the genetic algorithm, but we do exhaustive search, then it's in P exponential. But let's say our, in our motivation was precision. Uh, I will be almost done. So the, the next slide are faster. Uh, and this, uh, uh, this is a table of synthetic experiments done over like 50 uh, random graphs where we differentiate between, uh, so we had five processes and network generated uh, 
Kalsu graphs among them, and we tested the F1 precision when we especially focus on dense graphs when there are many connections, that's 18 case, 18 connections, and sparse graphs where we had only eight connections and we had only short data again. And you see that uh, both uh, the ex exhaustive search HGMM and, and uh, HGMM with genetic algorithm uh, outperform the uh, baseline method. Good. Uh, now the last topic is uh, how we used MDL for the third uh, case of graphical granular model for model with Fox processes. This is just to recollection what are these Fox processes. Uh, we used um, uh, we proposed not MML but MDL function for uh, modeling the intensities and uh, did the uh, 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 causal discovery by this principle. And uh, you can see from the table, everything is here multiplied by 100. Our method is MDLH, uh, MDLH and the other methods uh, are, again, significantly worse. P is the number of processes, so we had 7 and 20 processes. And it's, again, um, a synthetic experiment where we did uh, average over um, randomly generated graphs over seven or 20, uh, 20 uh, processes. Um, uh, the first uh, ADM4 and PHCR uh, established uh, Hox process uh, causal graphs, uh, causal methods. ML is maximum likelihood, LS least squares, IC is maximum out of BIC and AIC. So. And now uh, the last thing is the experiment. We did, uh, we applied this Hox process uh, with uh, causality, uh, this MDL on real data. We had seven large economies, uh, time series from period 2003 to 14, and their daily return volatility of sovereign bonds. And we wanted to discover the underlying um, influence network among the sovereign bonds. So since the data were, uh, were not in the form of Hox processes, we had to generate Hox processes from a uh, common time series. So we, in fact, identified shocks where uh, when we slide it, uh, a window over the data and then in some time interval, we compute, counted uh, the occurrence of values which were over some given uh, thresholds or which were bigger than 20, uh, uh, the, in the top top 20 percent of values. Uh, in this way, we generated five, 500 shocks in each dimension. And on the right side, you see the output graph. So yeah, you can see Japan is somehow isolated in the influence graphs, uh, which seems plausible to us because uh, all the economies uh, are uh, influenced by Japan, uh, then the Japan not. And uh, the question is, why is France so connected with others? So we thought it could be really uh, a realistic scenario because in 2003, uh, France uh, accused the US during so-called economic war. And this all spread uh, to, through tweets and through the world media. So this could have impact on, on the economies of all these G7 out of Japan, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, maximum likelihood uh, method in the comparison gave us by directed edges between US and Japan, which converts to daily. daily. Daily bond transactions or? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's because Japan is so isolated because of the opening time of the it also be, yeah. I mean, I don't say this is a wholly true. Yeah. I am just saying now we explain the results, how we interpret them. Of course, everything with Granger causality and every model, one must be yeah, uh, sure. explained with caution. Without expert knowledge, we should really not in uh, explain the world. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I just wanted to say. Uh, so uh, the arrow shows causality from to Ooh, yes. Mm -hmm. So from 
what I see is everything was caused by Italy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, we know Italy had also yeah. problems. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now to the end, uh, um, let's uh, recall what we all uh, talked about. We talked about alternative uh, Granger causal uh, uh, models for between uh, multiple variables. Uh, we showed that uh, the common approach by Lasso is not the best one, and we proposed the so called uh, compression schemes how to infer. Um, F, uh, uh, infer ca causality with high F1 precision. Here I can uh, provide you publicly available codes to each of the method. And here is uh, are my co-authors with whom we wrote the papers and here are the papers where are all the details. So thank you for your patience and for your attention that you have.